Okay guys, I'm going to use my um, Fusion Master. I'm going to show you um, how to mince some food. I'm actually going to do some chicken, some chicken thigh. Um, so as you can see, I keep my Fusion Master and greater attachments, everything um, with the mincer attachments, greater attachments and the Fusion Master inside a, a modular main. Um, I have the Fusion Master cookbook as well and it just makes it really easy to be able to do anything um, when you're keeping it all together. You won't lose any parts, it's really simple to use and basically really easy to put together. Much better than your old um, mincers where you used to have to attach them onto the side of your benches. You actually um, attach them that way onto your bench. This one will suction with the use of some very strong <laughs> connectors. So I'm just going to open all this up and take it out and set it up here in front of us and then you'll be able to see um, the basics on how to put it together and use it. Um, sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera and everything at the same time. This is your plunger that you're pushing food down into there with. Um, that plunger does have a little top that comes off and I keep my blades and my discs in there. Um, but you'll see that in a second. So I'm just grabbing out all my attachment pieces that I need. I don't need my greater attachment or the slicing attachment, so I'm just leaving those. And there's also in there some uh, sausage attachment there, the white one, so you can actually put sausage skin on there and make your own sausages. And then there's some um, cookie shapes, so um, they're there to squeeze out any uh, food that you're going to do in the shape of cookies and whatnot, which sounds a bit odd, but if you're going to do it, then fine. Um, so I'm just popping that out the way there on my cupboard my little Fusion Master cookbook. If I needed to refer to that, I can. So um, I will show you. In the cookbook at the beginning, it does give you a rundown, which if anybody's got any Tupperware products that has a cookbook that comes with it. Um, some of them, I've had people ask whether it's worthwhile buying them or not. Uh, sometimes I find that it certainly is because it gives you detailed instructions on how to use uh, the product, especially like the microwave pressure cooker where it tells you about temperatures the microwave wattage and things like that. However, they are things that you can look up online on the Tupperware website as well or ask consultants about and we can look them up for you. Um, for the Fusion Master, I think this cookbook is a brilliant idea or the book for it is a brilliant idea. It tells you exactly what comes with the Fusion Master, um, how to care for it, how to put it together, what each piece um, is called, how to use them and things like that. So I think if anyone bought the Fusion Master, um, this book would become very invaluable until you know how to do this with your eyes shut. Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't used the Fusion Master um, before. I pulled it out, put it together and went, hey, this is really easy. I'm going to do a video and show everybody how to do it. So if I make any mistakes, um, I do apologise now <laughs> because it's certainly something I've never done before. And if I make a mistake, it'll just be funny. So hopefully my fingers won't go through there. No, I'm, I'm joking. Mel, I'm joking. <laughs> I promise you this is going to be safe. The little ninja star there is your blade. Um, it is not overly sharp to um, hold in your hand. It is obviously sharp, but it's the motion of, of turning it, of cranking it, that um, actually allows it to cut. So even though it is sharp um it is okay for you to handle certainly if you're being silly with it like a knife or anything um then yeah you'll have a problem so there's your uh cutters for example your cookie cutters when you're pushing out dough and things like that it'll give you those shapes um there's some recipes in there so if you want some ideas on how to do different things they're in there as well but i think the first couple of pages until you certainly get used to using your fusion master um are definitely invaluable Alrighty, guys so i'm going to put the camera down and hopefully um, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Can I turn the camera while I'm using it? I'm going to go sideways. I don't know if I can flick it. Um, I don't believe I can. So let's see how well I can go one-handed and then I might stop the video and restart it facing me. I don't know why I can't flip the video. That's very bizarre. Um, can I zoom out? I can zoom in. I can zoom out. Okay, I can't flick the video while I'm using it. That is really bizarre. I can take a photo. Can I take a photo? I don't know. Okay, um, bear with me. All right, so that's the base of your Fusion Master with um, the nice silicon uh, mold that's going to help um, suction onto the base of whatever bench or tabletop you're using. Obviously, we don't recommend using it on glass. Um, I think there'll be too much pressure on the glass and you'll be um, pushing on it and it could cause a bit of problem there. But any any surface, whether it's a tabletop or a bench top, um, you don't need to go in on the edge. You just sit it wherever you want 
and once you actually turn this part here it will start to lock it on with its suction you can see a little locking clip that that actually um, is for part of the fusion master so that now has already started to suction even though I haven't got it all the way on um, I'm actually going to stop the video at this point um, and just restart again facing the other way with the camera sitting alright guys so I'm just going to put it all together um, just turn the camera around obviously so you can see me and you can see what I'm doing here with the fusion master um, so I've taken the uh, suction back off just to show you everything as I go um, I've got everything ready to go that I need so all I need to do is um, put it together let's try and get some of these things out of the way all right if you can see my hand here um that's where you'll need to concentrate so pretty much middle of the screen that's where i'm going to be working with the um fusion master hopefully with height once i put it all together um you're still going to be able to see what i'm doing i might just turn it on a, a slight angle i might go this way actually because then as the food comes out if it's on a bit of an angle you might see it a bit better but it's not a great angle um just slight okay so i've got a cutting board over here and a knife um, my Tupperware knife with my sheath still on it. Um, this is my uh, kitchen knife. Absolutely love it. Um, I've got some chicken thigh ready to go. Um, so I'm going to mince it. I'm not going to add anything to it because chicken thigh, as we know, does have some fat. Um, normally, if you're making sausages, any type of sausage that you make um, with all your flavouring and everything, you, you generally want approximately 80% meat to 20% fat to give it a really nice good texture that it doesn't get too dry um, or it's not too oily. Um, I've just chosen chicken thigh because I find that there's a little bit of its own fat that's going to help when I make the mince and it won't be too dry like chicken breast might be. Um, I will be doing chicken breast later for Dean. He's on a, his health challenge again. He's just um, using it to tone down a couple of last kilos and um, he is sticking with breast so the chicken thigh i'm gonna mince for myself and dave um i'm planning on using some to make meatballs with so i've got some lemongrass and ginger and garlic flavors like that um that's all going to go into it and i can actually mince all that through here if i want to as well um so i might say that to the end after i've done dean's chicken breast and then add the mince back in and then and then the flavoring um but obviously you can mince it however you, you can make it however you want. If you mince the meat or your chicken or whatever in here, um, you can just chop it up in a smooth chopper or whatever if you like, or cut it up with a knife and add it all in later and mix it with your hands if you're doing meatballs. Um, I'm also going to task my hand at some natural chicken nuggets. So the mince that I'm using, I'm going to shape. I'm going to put them in the fridge. And then I'll take them out and crumb, um, egg wash them, crumb them and cook them. And that won't be tonight. I'll, I'll probably um, do that with the mince another night. But the mince I'm making tonight will be enough to do a couple of meals for Dave and I anyway. All right, so putting it together, um, pop it down on the bench wherever you want to have it sitting. Um, the open end of the Fusion Master here where everything is going to attach to it, this is where our meat's going to come out from. And I'll be feeding it from the top and cranking it at the back. Um, now I am right handed so normally I'd probably want to go this way so I can crank with my right hand but um, for all intensive purposes I'm going to show you how easy to, it is to use hopefully <laughs> um, left handed as well even though I'm right handed so pop it on a bit of an angle um, I'm going to then put my um, mincer attachment on the top um, you'll see on the bottom it's got a piece that matches up with the piece at the bottom um, so it literally just slides on nice and easy that's on now that is my feeder that just comes out it's really easy to use so that will slide on and off until I get ready to suction it and lock it on so two little pieces um, that you can hold on to I don't know how well you can see that so little little grippy pieces there there you go um, so sit it on the bench start to turn them and what happens is the little locking piece that I showed in the video earlier actually turns inside this part that we've attached on um, and locks the whole thing together so right now that's fully attached to my bench and I'm trying to lift it and I can't because this bench is quite heavy that's on wheels and I've actually got products underneath as well I keep a couple of um, um, plug-in products I've got a bread oven under there which we don't really use anymore I've got a a KitchenAid mix master, I've got my slow cooker, I've got my microwave pressure cooker and I've got a juicer all sitting under there. So the bench is quite heavy and I I could almost lift the bench off the ground. Um but that's not going anywhere. So now that I've suctioned that on, I'm I'm fine to do whatever I want. I know it's not going to go anywhere. It's really easy to use. Alrighty. Um so once that's on um I'm gonna add all my pieces together and um we're going to start mincing some meat so it's really really simple to do um 
as I said, with the cookbook, if you're using the cookbook, it will give you lots of different ideas of different things that you can do. It'll show you how to um, not only make some pretty cool recipes, but how to use the um, mincer and grater attachments as well. Um, this Fusion Master is currently on sale for October. They've decided to pop it in November as well, so you won't miss out if you do want to grab one. Um, and the nice thing about that is, um, without missing out on anything, um, you, you buy it as a mincer attachment like I'm using now, and then you can buy your grater attachment for an extra $100 later. Your grater attachment is this piece here um, with the um, extra pieces as well. So I don't need that. I'm going to pop that away. And oh, so your extra grater attachments as well. Pop my book up there. And now I'm going to finish assembling the rest of it. So it's pretty easy to use. Um, this part's going to be the crank for the handle. Don't know how well you can see that. My lighting's not very good in here, I do apologise. So that's going to stick out the end here. So we just, um, oh sorry, this end. Feed that in and through. And the book's going to attack my phone. Um, feed that in and through. And it sticks out the other end, which obviously you can't see on the video, but it sits out the other end there. Um, and then we get ready to put everything onto the front. So the first thing we need to do is our little ninja star. So inside the plunger, um, you can take the top off and you'll see... Maybe you'll see in there. Um, I keep my blade and my grater attach, uh, my mincer attachments in there. So really, really um, good way to keep things tidy and, and kept in one place so you don't lose them. So once you've washed them, you want to put them back in. Um, as I mentioned in the other video, video or it might have been this one earlier, the Ninja Star is your blade. So it is actually sharp, but it's fairly safe to touch. So it's no biggie. Um, but obviously don't let children play with this part because it is a blade. You'll find that on the back there is a rounded um, side to it again a little hard to see but that's rounded the front's flat so the front um, needs to be facing outside so we pop that on and as you can see if I still push the other end of that um, I don't know what to call that <laughs> um, the turning piece um, then the whole thing will come out and there's a screw at the end of that um, tool there so when you put your little ninja star blade on the screw will actually stick out the end and that's where everything else attaches at the other end um, there's two sizes um, to mince your food there's one that's um, coarse and one that's finer I think when you're doing meat you need to use your coarse first and then use the finer one to make it much much finer um, with chicken breast I don't think it or chicken thigh it's not going to be as hard to push through as what beef and lamb will be or goat or whatever you're going to put through there so I'm going to um, test this out and I'm going to use the finer one first. Now, keep in mind I've never done it before, um, so I could be making a big mistake by not going to the coarse one first, but I know with red meats and whatnot, I need to use the, the coarse one first and then run it through with the fine one. So once you put it in there, just hold it with your finger so it's in place. There's a little spot at the top of your disc um, that matches up with the top of this. So again, you can't make a mistake putting it on. So just hold it with your finger. Um, pop the little locking piece at the front on. And again, like the, the actual mincer, um, Fusion Master, it attaches on and you can spin it by holding these little grippy parts here. Um, it's just lining up the thread, which, of course, because I'm doing a live video, it's not going to work. Oh, once we've got it lined up, there we go, that's feeding on now. So really, really easy to spin that. Um, you pop that on as, as tight as you want to do it the tighter you do it the harder it is to crank the handle so you might find you've got to let it off just a little bit just depending on how well but you do want it fairly tight because you don't want this all um sort of coming loose as you're using it obviously you don't want your blade to fall out into your food and whatnot even though it's touching your food that's not an issue it's just a pain to have to reset it again but pop that on as tight as you possibly can and then you just put your crank arm on so it just um goes on the back um let's see yeah i probably shouldn't move the video but there's a little piece there that's part of the crank arm that goes into the back of that um spool that i put in there there's a little dial to help turn it and lock it on tight and now that's on and when i turn it you probably can't see it but that's now and you can hear it obviously but that's now turning around in there if i loosen it off it won't make as much noise as much scraping noise and if i make it really really tight it's harder to crank that wheel um, and it sounds really tight but again because I've got this suction on really well on the bench it's not going to go anywhere all right so that's pretty much to I think how I'm going to um, like using that um, oh that's loud sorry but yeah once you've got it all lined up you're, you're good to go all right so I'll put my other greater uh, mincer attachment in there pop the, the lid on nice and tight and I'm going to open my chicken now and start um, popping it into my hopper push it down and it'll be ready to go 
Cool. Okay, so I'm just trying to keep the videos um, fairly short, so when I'm uploading it's not going to be too hard to get them on there. Um, so I've just pulled, uh, stopped the last video and then do a, a third section of it ready to go. So I'm just going to open up my chicken, um, and because they are thigh fillets, they um, are quite small, so they're not too big to use. So I take my sheath off, you can see my nice dimpled knife. Um, the dimpling helps prevent food sticking to your knife, so it makes it quite simple to do. I have got a cutting mat here, so if I find that putting it in is too big, I can slice it up on the cutting mat, and I'll be right to um, to keep going then. So I've got chicken thigh. I'm going to just um, cut into a couple of pieces just to make it a little bit easier to put straight into the hopper of my mincer, um, and then I'm just going to mix my meat through. So really, really simple to use. Whatever you're going to um, mince your meat into, make sure you pop that underneath. I'm using a um, mini that's a bowl. Obviously, you can use whatever you want there, um, but that will help me um, with portion, I guess. So, here we go. First time. So, pop the chicken in. Here we go. Oh, oh I'm moving my bench because I haven't got the brake on the wheels. And I just realised my phone's dropping down. Alright, so I might move just a bit closer. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold my, hold my phone up. One sec, I'll get my, <laughs> my modular mate. will help me hold my phone up, hopefully. Alright, so my chicken thigh is now starting to come out. As you can see, it doesn't sound too lovely. But there we go. So, remembering I'm using the fine um, mincer attachment, not the, the coarse one. And that's coming out quite well there. Alright, so my plunger's pushing all the food down to keep my fingers safe. I can pop some more in there. I'm going to try a thigh without even cutting it. Oh, awesome. That's working quite well. Okay, so as long as you've got a hand that you can crank the shaft with, um... There we go, you've got meat coming out the other end, and I think we've got happy days happening. Now, what you might have noticed as I started the video, I was um, turning the crankshaft this way, nothing was happening, um, and I thought, oh, maybe I have made a mistake here by not practicing first, um, but then I, uh, oh my gosh, I'm moving my table, then I um, started cranking the opposite direction, and it started coming out straight away, so... That obviously was what the problem was. I was cranking it the wrong way. Make sure you have a bit of a practice there and crank it the right way when you're doing it. I'll just put my brakes on my kitchen uh, bench, which is um, a trolley that I actually did buy from Bunnings. <laughs> um, it's, as most people can probably see in the video, it is a little tall for me for most things, but I cope quite well with it. Just going to pop my shoes back on, sorry. Um, but yeah, again, whatever you're going to put this um, attachment onto, there we go, now my table's not moving. Whatever you secure it on, um, certainly not going to be a problem for you um, with it shifting or coming off. So as long as you can crank um, comfortably. So people, so I'm, I'm trying to use my opposite arm while I talk now. Um, people that have RSI issues, I do have a couple of friends that have spoken to me recently about some RSI issues. Um, you should not have too much trouble holding this but it might be a problem when it comes to cranking. Um, it does take a bit of pressure. Um, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the top right now because there's not a great deal of meat still in there. Um, but certainly with um, pushing down on it, it'll help push your, your meat through. So you do need a bit of pressure doing that as well. Um, so another piece going in and I'm not uh, cutting it. I'm just putting it straight in as it is. There we go. Now, it does get a little hard to turn, and again, because I'm doing it left-handed, and I'm normally right-handed, um, it does get a little hard to turn if you're doing it awkwardly on a bench that is taller than you, and you're using the, the opposite hand, um, but it's it's not that hard to do, um, as long as you can comfortably get a grip on it and crank it. As you can see, using my right hand now, which is, you know, my preferred hand, same right-handed, it's much easier to do, but as the meat's just slowly coming out, you can take your time doing that as well. All right, so I've got, um, what have I done? Three chicken thighs, and I've just filled up my that's a bowl. This uh, pack of chicken thighs is 1.118 kilo. I've got one, two, 
three, four left in there. Oh, no, five. So I've got a couple of small ones as well. Um, so I'll pop another one in. And then I might turn the video off and just finish the rest. So it doesn't bother you guys with um, watching stuff you don't need to watch me finishing. All right. So there we go, another small one. Just gave it a bit of a push there. And now it's pretty much passing through the, the crane and or the little tool that this that twirls around inside. But there we go. So nice, fresh chicken mint. Um, no preservatives because it's just chicken thigh, um, just meat. I've got no uh, chemicals or preservatives in there. And um, it's certainly a lot better than um, worrying about what is in the chicken mints and whatnot when you're buying that at the supermarket. Um, so, do, you know, obviously it depends on what price you're buying it for. Um, I filled up that little mini that's a bowl and um, this kilo and a little bit of chicken thigh cost me $9 at Audi. Um, I would normally buy like, two trays of chicken mints at um, Woolworths for a little over that. So I think a tray is about $6 or $7 at Woolworths. And I'm getting uh, 500 grams of mint, I think, out of it. And obviously it's not 500 grams of chicken because it'll have preservatives and whatnot added to it. Um, we're here. I'm actually going to get my 100% um, chicken meat, which is really great. Um, so obviously it's not used just for meat. Um, you can mince lots of different things. If you have a look at some of the videos um, that are around there, I think I shared one recently, you can... Um, Put, you can actually put chickpeas through there, make a hummus. Um, you could, if you've got eggplants, you could just put them straight in and mince it out. Although your smooth chopper might be good for that if you've got that. Um, what these are really good for with your grater attachments is a kilo of cheese. Um, if anybody is aware of when you're buying grated cheese, buying grated cheese already grated in a packet at the supermarket, um, the cheese is coated in a um, byproduct and that byproduct is chemical unfortunately and it's there to stop the cheese from clumping together in the packet um so generally you'll get some grated cheese out and um it doesn't stick together it's because it's all coated um if you get a block of cheese and you grate it yourself in a fusion master with the grater attachment you're getting 100 percent cheese of that block and um if you don't use it in you know a fairly reasonable amount of time you'll find that the cheese may start clumping because it hasn't got the chemicals on there but there's nothing wrong with that cheese you can still obviously keep using it um but a lot of families use a lot of cheese i don't use a lot because i actually don't really eat cheese um i used to love it as a child but unfortunately it doesn't love me and um we don't use a lot in this house but uh, since buying the Fusion Master and that was one of the first things I was going to try. I was actually going to um, grate a kilo of cheese with it to show everybody um, how well the grater would actually work but tonight I decided um, I'm going to get it out and make some mints and once I, I said, I, as I said earlier, once I put this together and realised how quick and simple it was to put together, um, I decided just to crank out the video and see how it went. So hope you liked it. Um, if you want to grab one of these, keep in mind it has left our normal seasonal range. So you can't generally buy it. Currently it is available during the October promo and has stayed for November. So they haven't sold out um, for October, otherwise they wouldn't be available for November. Um, think about Christmas. Really good idea if you want to be making um, big meals for big families when they're visiting and entertaining. Um, you know, mince your own meat, make perfect lasagnas, um, you know, match it up with an ultra pro and you'll be absolutely set. So, um, yep, let me know if you want to get one of these. If not, if you want to have a party and check it out yourself and give it a play, um, do let me know, obviously. Happy to do a party. Um, but that's it. There's my chicken mince for dinner. See ya. Just thought I'd quickly show you. I've now turned it around so I can do it right-handed. Um, and this time I am actually cranking it in the right direction and I'm doing it away from me and it's making it much much easier using my strong hand rather than my weak hand um, but yeah really really simple to do so doing it exactly as I showed you in the videos earlier I'm up to my very last chicken thigh now put that in There we go, she's pretty much down the bottom of the hopper. I had to change bowls, as you see, my Vatsa bowl was quite full just as I finished the video, so um, change bowls. There we go, really, really, really simple to do. Now that there's no 
um, big pieces of meat traveling through there. It's just turning really, really smooth in my hand. Um, I'm just literally cleaning off my plunger to push little bits down um, and finish off my mince. But there we go, that's it. So nice, fresh uh, chicken fry fillet mince ready to go. Got um, plenty for meatballs, plenty for nuggets, and whatever else you want to do with it. So, um, just over a kilo's worth. It only took me a few minutes to really get that done. Less than 10, 10 minutes set up and, and doing it, I guess. Once um, I'm not stopping and talking to you guys. Um, and yeah, nice healthy mince if you like mince, <laughs> um, without anything added to it. Really, really simple.